talk about complex numbers. Complex numbers is a huge set of numbers that basically consists of every number we've ever encountered in our lives. Okay? A complex number can be written in the form A plus BI, where A is your real component, and B times I is what's called your imaginary component. And I really hate that word, imaginary. People just think, oh, we just made that up. Well, you know what? We made up all the numbers, right? We invented five and negative one half. So imaginary numbers are as important and practical and useful as any number. In fact, your little phone and your computer and the airplane that you travel in, all of that technology, electri any kind of electronic circuitry, all that technology really is with us today because we can solve problems, engineering problems, that we can't solve just with real numbers, using imaginary numbers. They're very practical, so they're not just woo-woo, pie-in-the-sky things. All right. So complex numbers are your big set. All your real numbers that we know and love are a subset. Your imaginary numbers are also a subset. So what are just your pure imaginary numbers? Well, square root of negative 1. Square root of negative um, 9, i, 3i, negative 1 half i. These are all imaginary numbers. Real numbers, you have your rational numbers like 1 half or negative 2 thirds or 7 or a negative 1,001. You have your irrational numbers. These are your rational numbers. You have your irrational numbers, which I shouldn't make smaller because they're actually more irrational numbers than rational numbers. But I, okay, that's a whole other thing to meditate about. Pi is an irrational number. Square root of five, right? E, anything that cannot be expressed as a fraction. <coughs> Excuse me. These are all subsets. So 7 is actually a complex number because you could write it as 7 plus 0i, right? Imaginary numbers, 3i, I could 0 plus 3i. So every real number, every imaginary number is actually a complex number that can be written in the form a plus bi. All righty. So those are complex numbers. So <clears throat> basically complex numbers in the form A plus BI. Now, we often say A plus BI, but of course, that doesn't always have to be an addition sign. You can have a subtraction as well. Okay? So when I have these complex numbers, I can do operations with them. I can add them. I can subtract. I can multiply. I can divide. But before we do all of that stuff, we kind of have to understand a little more about how I works. I is defined to equal the square root of negative 1. Okay? That has to be defined for us. That's a given, right? So now everything else comes from that. So what happens when I square I squared? Well, I'm going to square the square root of negative 1. That square undoes that square, and I equal negative 1. So yeah, I squared equals negative 1. That makes sense. <clears throat> What's I cubed going to equal? Well, I'm pretty sure I cubed, I could think of as I squared times I. If I squared is negative 1, then I can think of I cubed as being the same as negative I. Okay? How about I to the fourth? Well, I could express i to the fourth as either i to the third times i, or as i squared times i squared. Either one will leave me in the same place. i squared times i squared, well, i squared is negative one, another i squared is negative one, that equals positive one. So I have this interesting kind of setup here. I have i, I have i squared is negative one, I have i cubed is negative i, and have i to the fourth is equaling 1. 
Okay, let's try I to the fifth. Let's see, I to the fifth I could, you know, think of as I squared times I to the third, or I to the fourth times I, that might be the easiest. If I to the fifth is I to the fourth times I, I to the fourth is one, times I, oh, hold on, I to the fifth is just the same as I. Isn't that interesting? Huh, let's see what I to the sixth is equal to. Well, let's see, I could say I to the sixth is I to the fourth times I squared, wait, that's be one times negative one. Huh, look at that, I to the seventh, what do you think I to the seventh is gonna equal? Well, let's see, it's I to the fourth times I to the third. Oh my goodness, are you seeing what I'm seeing? I'm seeing a pattern. I to the fifth the same as I, I to the sixth the same as I squared, and so on, and so on, and so on. What do you think I to the ninth is going to be? The well, I to the ninth is I to the eighth times I, so that's I. I to the tenth is negative one. I to the eleventh is negative I. I to the twelfth is one, and so on and so forth. So I have a pattern that is four long, a four long pattern. So I know I'm just going to cycle through this pattern. That means if I have an i to a bigger power, I can simplify it. So let's say I want to simplify <clears throat> i to the 17. Well, Here's I to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. All right. That's going to be the same as I. I to the 17 is going to go through my cycle. What if I had I to the 1,001? Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Yeah. There's got to be a shortcut, right? So why don't you pause the video and see if you can come up with a shortcut. There are lots of different ways to, to do this. Give it a try. And here we are. Did you come up with a shortcut? I bet you did. So let's look and see how we could have done I to the 17 without counting, although counting is just fine. One way to think about it is if my cycle is four long, I basically want to go and see what multiple of 4 is in 17. So does 4 go evenly into 17? No. But 4 divides evenly into 16, right? 4 goes into 16 four times. I don't really even care how many times 4 goes into 16. But I know that 16, i to the 16, is going to be right here. And I have a remainder of 1. So if I divide 17 by 4, I'm going to have a remainder of 1. Because 4 goes into 16 with 1 left over. That means I'm going through my cycle however many times with a remainder of 1. Since this is first in my cycle, my remainder of 1 is going to be here. So if I had a remainder of 3, right? Let's say I had i to the 43. Well, 4 does not go into 43, but it goes into 40 with a remainder of 3. So that means remainder of 3, remainder 1, 2, 3. That means that i to the 43 is going to equal negative i. Do you see how that works? So this is like a remainder of 1, remainder of 2, of 3, of 4. Well, are you going to have a remainder of 4 if you're dividing by 4? No, you're going to have a remainder of 0. So, if I go to that i to the 1001, and you can use your calculator to help you, okay? 4 
does not divide evenly into 1,001, but it divides into a 1,000 with a remainder of 1. So that means this is going to equal i. Okay. What if I had, you know, something like i to the 13th times i to the 3rd? Well, this is really just something raised to the 13 times the same base raised to the third. Can I first do what I know about multiplying bases that are the same? I can add those exponents, right? That's going to be, give me i to the 13 plus 3, or 16. And then i to the 16, hey, 4 divides evenly into 16. That means that's going to end up at the end of my cycle. That's going to equal 1. Does this make sense? So sometimes we call this the powers of i. It's a nice cyclical thing. And the same strategy can be used for anything cyclical. If you have a bubblegum machine, and let's say you have seven different flavors of bubblegum, and they come out in order, you know, like uh, red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, violet, and they always come out in that order. What color would the, you know, 200th bubble gum be? Well, you see how many times 7 goes into 200, find the remainder, and then count through your cycle. So this is a cool thing that doesn't just work for powers of i, but for anything that changes, uh, any sequence that changes um, cyclically. Does that make sense? All right, so now that I know this, I can do some operations. Okay? So adding and subtracting is really exactly what you think it will be. It's just combining like terms. If I have parentheses grouping, I don't really, those parentheses aren't doing anything, right? They don't mean anything. In this context, I can take them away and then just combine 3 and 5, combine nicely, 2i, negative 5i, combine nicely, and there I simplify it. Right? I combine like terms. If this were a subtraction instead, well, the one thing you'd have to remember when you're getting rid of your negative, uh, getting rid of your parentheses, is you'd have to distribute that negative. That's the one sneaky thing about subtraction. Still, though, you're combining like terms, you're combining like terms, and there you go. Multiplying is a little trickier. I'm just sticking with my same ones. But again, it's just like multiplying together two binomials. I'm going to double distribute. 3 times 5, 3 times negative 5i, 2i times 5. OK, let's look at this. This is going to be negative 10i times i is i squared. Ooh, i squared. That's negative 1, isn't it? So I have negative 59 plus 10i minus 10 times negative 1. That's going to give me a plus 10, a 15. Why don't I go ahead and combine those together? And now that's going to give me a 25 minus 5i. So that's how we would multiply these. Dividing is a little trickier. Let's just talk about it very quickly. When you're dividing, there's this little thing called a conjugate. And we talked about this a little bit. It's considered kind of bad form to leave a square root in the denominator of a fraction. And since i is really a square root, we like to clear that denominator of a radical, okay? So in this case, we don't often like to leave i in the denominator. So we talked about this in class. What can I multiply 7 minus i by that would get rid of that i? And the answer we came up with is we multiply by the conjugate. The conjugate is exactly the same except the subtraction becomes a addition or addition becomes subtraction. Now I can't just multiply the bottom of a fraction by something. 
but I can if I also multiply the numerator by that same something because I'm just multiplying by a fancy form of 1. So now I do double distribution. On the bottom I get 49 plus 7i minus 7i minus i squared. Ooh, let's just look at that denominator. You see how nicely that worked? Those go away. This becomes a negative 1. So I have 49 minus a negative 1, which is a 50. I know I'm doing this quickly. I have 14 plus 2i plus 21i plus 3i squared. Now it's fine to have i in the numerator, and I'm going to have it. So let's see, I have 14 plus 23i uh, and then plus 3i squared. I'm going to replace that i squared with a negative 1. So this is really going to be 14 minus 3, which is an 11. So dividing really is rewriting as a fraction that does not have i in the denominator. Okay? Have fun.